Hey, Carl Lanning from Brazos River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically the week of March the 15th through 21st. So let's see, what do we have? First of all, this young lady, this is uh, Miss Susanna Salter. On March 17th of 1961, Miss Salter died at the age of 101. However, her place in history was sealed forever. Uh, partially by a joke that backfired. Kansas was the first state that allowed women to vote in municipal elections. Uh, several prominent men of Argonia, Kansas, were not too wild about this idea, and so as a practical joke, they decided to place Miss Salter as a candidate for mayor. She didn't find out about uh, this until the actual day of the election when several prominent members of the Republican Party came to her and asked her if she would mind staying in the election. She agreed to do so. She won by 66% of the vote. <laughs> uh, quite successful. She received congratulations from across the United States and around the world. She served one rather uneventful term as mayor of Argonia and then went back to her full-time job of raising her eight children. So. Miss Salter, first female mayor in the United States of America. Then we have, and I will try to pronounce her name, March 15th, 1944, Miss Maria Yogroskaya, I think I may just call her Maria from now on, died of wounds in combat fighting the Nazi invaders of the Soviet Union. In 1943, she had received news that her husband had died two years earlier during the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. She got mad and decided to get even with a tank. She wrote a letter to Stalin uh, after selling pretty much everything that she owned, uh, scraping every dime she could get together. She came up with a grand total of 50,000 rubles and wrote a letter to Stalin saying, my husband was killed in action defending the motherland, and I want revenge on the fascist dogs. She asked that the money be used to purchase a T-34 tank, that she be assigned to it, that she be able to name it the Fighting Girlfriend. The Soviet High Command agreed. So, there we have the Fighting Girlfriend. Now, I don't read Cyrillic Russian, so I couldn't really tell you exactly which part of that says Fighting Girlfriend, but that's it, though. That's the tank. She fought in three major battles. Uh, she performed gallantly by all accounts. She rose to the rank of sergeant. She was killed while actually trying to repair a tread on her tank by artillery fire. She was taken to a hospital, was in a coma for two months, and, and died. Uh, she was posthumously awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union, the highest military award that they used to give. But the fighting girlfriend itself made it all the way to the city of Berlin at the end of the war. So, Maria. On March 18th of 1990, what is believed to be the most valuable art heist in the history of the world took place here at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. The three Rembrandts, well, actually, these are some of the items that were stolen. Among them were three Rembrandts, five Degas paintings, and a number of other items. Estimated value was five to six hundred million dollars. Two guards were tricked into admitting two men who were disguised as policemen who claimed to be there on a call for a disturbance. As soon as they were allowed in, they overpowered the guards, handcuffed them, and then spent the next 90 minutes going from floor to floor, room to room, looking at artworks. Now, it turns out this was really a rather strange robbery because they passed up several artworks that were more valuable than the ones that they actually took. Also, they used a blade to simply cut the paintings out of the frames, whereas they had plenty of time to have done that a lot more gently. So nobody really knows exactly what the deal was on this. Uh, however, the there have been no serious suspects. The investigation is still ongoing. Uh, the uh, 
expiration of uh, statute of limitations occurred years ago, and there's a $10 million reward and still absolutely no information whatsoever. So it's a bit of a mystery still. What do we got next? Ah, yes, I mentioned this fellow to you last week. This is Mr. George Parker, born March the 16th of 1860, probably the greatest con man this country ever produced who was a non-politician. What Mr. Parker was particularly good at was well, selling things that he didn't know. For example, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, which he also said that he built, but, quote, was tired of owning it. He also sold the original Madison Square Garden, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, and Grant's Tomb. He once sold the Brooklyn Bridge twice in one week. Uh, this came out during one of his three trials. Uh, he tended to prey on recent immigrants because the Brooklyn Bridge was located near the Ellis Island Depot where the immigrants would actually come ashore in the United States. The prices varied anywhere from $200 to $5,000 based on how much the person had. He, could, he was able to produce very convincing documents that he actually owned these various things. Usually police were tipped off that George had made another sale when one of the customers was setting up a toll booth on the bridge to recoup their investments. Uh, he was finally uh, put on trial for the third time for fraud, and this time sentenced to life in Sing Sing Prison, where he died eight years later, but he was a very, very popular inmate. The other inmates and guards loved him just because of his stories. So there you go, Mr. George Parker. Well, that's it for this week. However, next week, what we're going to find out is the relationship between this man and that pair of shoes. And it's much, much closer than you might think. Thanks, everybody. I'm Carl Lanning, Brad's River Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.